I'm here to stay, brother my neighbor trying to get this hate up out of me What's the problem now, I wanna be part of the solution Draw all your blood in my veins, no transfusion It's your life to the bone, the real deal Why the wait to the red and the blue pill Hello again everyone, my name is Arak Gabar Here as always, seeking the truth My video topic for today is going over the Sabbath uh, And I have another brother in the truth here with me today uh, that's going to be bringing forth the scriptures. Brother, go ahead and introduce yourself. Shalom, family. I'm your brother Ramak. Yashal. So I have brother Ramak here. Like I said, he'll be bringing forth the scriptures as I'm going over the commentary for today's lesson. Now, most modern Christians today go to church on Sunday and consider this to be their day of rest. On most calendars, it is easy to see that Sunday is considered the first day of the week. But the Bible clearly tells us that the Sabbath is the seventh day of the week. The first scripture is coming from the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thy labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Now some people believe that this, that this law was created during the time of Moses, but in fact this law has existed since the beginning of creation. We can find this in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verses 2 through 3. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 2. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and, and made. In the New Testament, we can see the observance of honor in the Sabbath was still kept even after the death and resurrection of Christ. We can find this in the book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 21. The book of Acts, chapter 15, verse 21. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Some Christians believe that since Christ died, we no longer have to keep the Sabbath or that we can change the Sabbath to whatever day we like. Let's see what Christ said. Next scripture is coming from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17 through 18. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, to heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. In the Old Testament, it was prophesied that one day the Roman Empire would attempt to change God's laws. We can find this in the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verses 23 through 25. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 23. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings, and he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times, in the, di in the dividing of time. Early Christians kept the Sabbath on the designated seventh day of the week. 
During the reign, during the reign of the Roman Empire, true Christianity became illegal. However, Judaism at that time was regarded as the legal religion as long as they obeyed Roman laws. Sunday was known as the day of rest in the Roman Empire, whose religion was Mithraism. Mithraism was a pagan religion that honored Mithra as the Roman god of the sun. Now, when the Roman Emperor Constantine came into power in 313 AD, he legalized Christianity, but made Sunday worship a law. Uh, brother, he's going to actually read a law that was written by Constantine during this time. The law read, on the venerable day of the sun, let the magistrates and people residing in cities rest, and let all workshops be closed. Now this Sunday law was officially confirmed by the Roman papacy during the Council of Laodicea in 364 AD. Again, the brother's going to read, not from a scripture, but this was actually a law that was passed during the Council of Laodicea. It decreed, Christians shall not Judaize and be idle on Saturday, but shall work on that day. But the Lord's day they shall especially honor. And as being Christians, shall, shall if possible do no work on that day. If however they are found Judaizing, they shall be shut out from Christ. Nowhere in the Bible does it authorize the changing of the Most High Sabbath. And yet, multiple prominent members of the Catholic Church freely admit that it was them who changed the day from Saturday to Sunday. Most people are oblivious to the fact that worshiping on Sunday did not begin with the Catholic Church. It was in fact a religious day of worship around 2,000 years before Christ was even born. It began shortly after the flood of Noah when Nimrod and his mother slash wife Semiramis created the Babylonian religion. Originating at the Tower of Babel, sun worship spread throughout the entire ancient world. Apart from the true doctrine of the Bible, history re reveals that all major religions today originated from Babylon. It is admitted by most historians and Bible scholars that the gods and goddesses of the ancient civilizations were all a part of the same religious belief system. The names of the various deities, however, were different because of the confusing of the languages at the Tower of Babel. The Most High commanded Israel to not worship these other gods, and by law, Israelites were punished if found to be doing so. The next scripture is coming from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17, verses 2 through 5. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17, verse 2. If there be found among you within any of thy gates which the Lord thy God giveth thee, man or woman, that have wrought wickedness in the sight of the Lord thy God in transgressing his covenant, and have gone and served other gods and worshipped them, either the sun or moon or any of the host of heaven, which I have not commanded. And it be told thee, and thou hast heard of it and inquired diligently, and behold, it be true and the thing certain, that such abomination is wrought in Israel, then shalt thy bring forth that man or that woman, which hath committed that wicked thing unto thy gates, even that man or that woman, and shalt stone them with stones till they die. Every pagan religion worshiped the sun as their main deity. Sun worship is the direct worship of Satan under the symbolism of worshiping the sun. In the scriptures, the god named Baal was also represented as the sun. The Romans called their sun god Mithra, and they worshiped him on the first day of the week. This, this day was also called Dies Solus, which in Latin, it means day of the sun. This is where the, uh, excuse me, apologize. This is where the name Sunday originates because this day was dedicated to the sun or its worship. The next scripture is coming from the book of Exodus, chapter 31, verses 13 through 17. The book of Exodus, chapter 31, verse 13. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbaths ye shall keep, 
for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you. Every one that, that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among the people. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth, whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations, for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. The Most High, the Most High gave us the Sabbath as a sign. The Hebrew word for sign in the Strong's Concordance is number H225. Brother, go ahead and read the definition of the word sign in the Strong's Concordance. It means a signal, flag, beacon, or monument, a mark, miracle, in sign or token in the hebrew language the words sign and mark are synonymous we know that satan tries to counterfeit many things that the most high does so if the most high has a certain day set as a sign or a mark then satan would also have a set day for people to worship him we'll go next scripture is coming from the book of revelation chapter 14 verses 9 through 10 the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of, the, of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone, in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Now, the Greek word for mark in the Strong's Concordance uh, is number G5482. Brother, go ahead and read the definition for the word mark. A scratch or etching, a stamp, a badge of servitude, a sculptured figure, statue, graven or mark. Sunday worship is typically seen as a sign of servitude in modern Christianity. This false Sabbath is Satan's way of leading mankind away from the Most High and in no way honors the God of the Bible. Now, my final quotes are coming from a book written by Alexander Hislop. The name of this book is called From the Two Babylons. In this book, on page, we're going to read from pages 226. Again, this is a couple of quotes from Alexander Hislop's book pertaining to this very same topic. The Two Babylons, page 226. The sun, as the great source of light and heat, was worshipped under the name of Baal. Now, the fact that the sun under, the, under that name was worshipped in the earliest ages of the world shows the audacious character of these first beginnings of apostasy men having spoken as if the worship of the sun and of the heavenly bodies was a very excusable thing into which the human race might very readily and very innocently fall but but how stands that fact according to the primitive language of mankind the sun was called shemesh that is the servant the name no doubt being divinely given to keep the world in mind of the great truth that however glorious was the orb of day, it was after all the appointed minister of the bounty of the great unseen creator to his creatures upon earth. Men knew this, and yet with the full knowledge of it, they put the servant in the place of the master and called the son Baal, that is, the Lord, and worshipped him accordingly. So again, we're going to continue on uh, in the same book coming from the two Babylons. Now we're going to read another paragraph on the next page, page 227. The two Babylons, page 227. 
In Egypt, one of the commonest symbols of the sun or sun god is a disc with a serpent around it. The original reason of that identification seems just to have been that as the sun was the great enlightener of the physical world, so the serpent was held was held to have been the great enlightener of the spiritual by giving mankind the knowledge of good and evil. This of course implies tremendous depravity on the part of the ringleaders in such a system considering the period when it began. But such appears to have been the real meaning of the identification. At all events we have evidence, both scriptural and profane, for, for the fact that the worship of the serpent began side by side with the worship of fire and the sun. So there you go. That is uh, all the scriptures and the, the extra sources that prove that Sunday worship is actually nothing more than the worship of Baal or the sun or Satan. So Sunday worship is nowhere in accordance to the Bible. And if those that wish to follow the God of the Bible should stick to worshiping on the Sabbath, which we know is the seventh day of the week, specifically beginning from Friday sundown until Saturday sundown. Again, um, as always, I urge people to not take my word for it, but to always go out and do your own research. But if you found this video informative, uh, feel free to hit like. I'm always open to leaving uh, to questions and comments on my page as well. And again, no matter what you do, remember to always seek the truth. Thank you for watching. Shalom.